I believe before me and my angry back muscles retiring for the <laughs> evening, I can squeeze one more period story out of my head, <laughs> trying to come up with something that most of the people here haven't heard before. So I'm going to go for one of the more recent ones that I've learned. And like most stories that I've learned, I know all of the details except the names of the characters. So I think we could make do. Uh, name of this story is The French Werewolf. And it begins with this young knight who is in service to his king. And he lives in the town near the castle where he could be on call when needed. And being a young man, of course, eventually he takes a wife. And living together for a while, his wife begins to notice, well, there's one very strange thing about this young man. It seems that once every month, he goes to a back room and he opens a chest and he takes out this very old cloak with a barely visible coat of arms embroidered in the back of it. And holding this cloak over his shoulder, he tells his wife, I'm going out for the evening. I will be back in the morning. Now, her first impression, remember this is France, <laughs> is that he must have a mistress somewhere. But then, why on such a regular basis, only once each month? So eventually she gets up the courage to ask him about this, and at first he brushes her off and says, it's none of your concern, you, you, you don't ask about it. But she continues to be curious and pesters him, and finally he sits down and tells her, all right, I will tell you my secret but you must never tell anyone else of this. There is a curse upon my family. And once each month on the night of the full moon, I must go out into the woods and there I am changed into a wolf. Now, when I am a wolf, I have the thoughts of a man, but I also have the thoughts of a wolf. And I must go running through the woods and hunt for myself. But when the sun rises, I come back and lay down on this cloak. And somehow, this cloak reminds my body of what it once was, and I change back into a man again. So she accepts this explanation. But over time, the more she thinks about it, the more she becomes worried. Uh, what if my husband is killed by hunters someday? What if even worse, he forgets what day it is and I suddenly wake up with a wolf in my bed? Uh, this could not be anything good. Uh, well, it's made slightly better by the fact that this knight is often called by his king to go out and, and perform his duties. And so while he is gone, remember, this is France again, um, she sets her eye on a young scribe who is a member of the court, and they become, well, secret lovers, the French thing. And uh, eventually, late one night, while they lay in bed together, she confides in him what the secret is, and says that, I must divest myself of, of, of this husband of mine, uh, the more I think about it, the more I worry about this curse of his. And the scribe says, if you plan on killing your husband, I want nothing to do with it. And she says to him, no, I have a better plan. In two days is the night of the full moon. So I want you to hide in the darkness in the alley near my house. And when my husband leaves, I want you to follow him. And when you see him go into the woods, and change into a wolf. I want you to come up and take the cloak and take it home and burn it. And if you do this, he will be a wolf forever and I'll be rid of him. And so the young scribe agrees to do this. And he goes out and follows the man and sees him transform. And he picks up the cloak 
And as he is walking down the road back towards the town, he hears a large group of people coming and not wanting to explain what he is doing here on the road with this odd cloak. He quickly turns and he hides it up in a hole in a tree and makes his way home. Well, it's not long before rumors start flying around the neighbors and the farms that there's a wolf in the area and chickens are going missing and goats, and sometimes even sheep, and something must be done about this. Well, word reaches the king, of course, and as a good king, he, is, he establishes a hunt for this animal, and they sweep through the woods, and eventually they, they cordon off the area and close in closer and closer, finally trapping the animal with his back against the cliff. And as the archers gather around and draw their bows, the king rides up to witness the execution of this beast. And he is most surprised when the wolf does not cower or growl. It simply steps forward towards the king and bows. And the king holds up his hand to the archers and says, hold. And he looks down and says, Tell me, beast, do you understand me? And the wolf nods. So, do you acknowledge that I am your king? And again, the wolf nods and bows deeply. And the king says, this is most remarkable. So, wolf, if I am your king, if I command you to do something, you will do it? And the wolf nods to him. Very well. While I consider this, I want you to come back to the palace with me. We will put you up there while I determine what is to be done about this. So the wolf follows him meekly back to the castle. Uh, most of the other horses, of course, tend to avoid it, but they get back to the castle. The wolf settles into to court and provided for it. And over time, this wolf and the king becomes rather friendly. In fact, frequently the wolf will lay beside the king's throne or sit beside him as he visits, as he receives visitors, which is most impressive to those who come visiting. And then comes the day when the young knight's wife comes before the king. He says, Your Majesty, I believe my my husband has run off with a mistress. I wish you to grant me a divorce. And as the king is thinking about this, the wolf looks up, sees the woman, and immediately begins bristling and growling greatly. And the king looks rather surprised and says, the wolf has never done that to anyone before. I am not sure what's going on here. And he looks down at the animal and says, is there go something going on here that I should be made aware of? And the wolf nods, and he says, is this woman telling me the whole story? And the wolf shakes his head. And the king looks up as the woman is slowly backing her way out of the court and points to her and says, guards, seize this woman and take her away. I want her question. There's something going on here that, that I do not understand that I want to be made aware of. Well, they questioned her, and very quickly she broke down and told them the story. And they brought in the young scribe, who then took them out and showed them where he had hidden the cloak. Well, they had to drive away an owl, which had made a nest in, in the tree. So the cloak was even rattier and, and more worn than ever. But the coat of arms was still barely visible. And when they brought it back and they spread it out in the throne room before the king, the wolf immediately stepped forward and lay down upon it and was transformed back into a man. And the king looked surprised, recognizing the young knight immediately and said, good sir, I have done you a great disservice. All these, these months, I have assumed that you have deserted me 
broken your oath and run away, where in fact you have still been serving me well. So, in deference to your service to me, I hereby appoint you to be a captain of my guards with all of the rights and privileges associated thereof. And then she turns to where the young woman and the scribe are being held by the guardsmen and points to her and says, you, I hereby grant you your divorce. Furthermore, I state that your property, your title, and everything you own is hereby seized by the crown and you will be banished along with your lover for the rest of your lives. Well, the young knight returned to his duties. Eventually he remarried and it was discovered that apparently in the long time he had spent as a wolf, the curse was now broken. And thus it was that he knew not in his new wife raised a family and continued to serve his king faithfully for the rest of his life. And that is the end of the story of the French werewolf.